Negotiation. It's a simple word that, in many people, elicits a strong emotional response. For some, it strikes a chord of terror and anxiety. For others, it produces a gleeful sense of anticipation. For many people, the idea of negotiating is something that only takes place at UN Security Council meetings and in corporate boardrooms among high-powered businessmen. Though some of these people are reluctantly willing to embrace the idea of negotiating every few years by asking for a raise at work or buying a new car, if they really have to. While negotiation does encompass all of these major life activities, in reality, we all engage in a variety of negotiations every day across all aspects of life, like trying to get the kids to eat their broccoli, convincing the faceless customer service person on the other side of the phone to send us a refund for the defective product we received, or coming to consensus with your spouse on a paint color for the dining room. And while negotiation may be most associated with big-ticket items, homes, cars, international peace treaties, developing your negotiating skills will serve you well in all walks of life. After all, every transaction boils down to one simple fact. When you're meeting another party at the negotiation table, whether that table is literally a boardroom table, a seller's kitchen table, or the paint aisle at Lowe's, both sides want something, and the goal is to reach a compromise that allows each side to walk away satisfied. The big question is, how can we best accomplish this? And that's the real goal of negotiation. What we mean by negotiation in an ideal world, after a negotiation concludes, each party is happy with the outcome and each feels he got everything he wanted, or at the very least, everything he needed. But we don't live in an ideal world, and in most negotiations, both parties aren't going to walk away feeling like they got exactly what they wanted. In the real world of negotiations, oftentimes the best we can strive for is to get everything we want or need while giving the other party just enough to satisfy them. Obviously, we'd love for the other party to be thrilled about the outcome as well, especially if we expect that we'll have to negotiate with them again in the future. But at the very least, we want them to walk away without any lingering animosity or regret. In any negotiating situation, there are going to be some things that both parties really want, and there will be other things one side finds important but the other side doesn't particularly care about. A fair solution, generally speaking, is more than each party simply getting an equal amount of the agreement. This is where perception becomes important. In most cases, the parties won't consider the compromise to be a good one unless they also felt involved and empowered during the negotiation. If the other side felt humiliated or steamrolled during the negotiation, they won't be satisfied no matter how much they got. In other words, negotiation is not just about the outcome. It's about the process.